President Biden got his physical today at Walter Reed, probably his last checkup before he's expected to announce he's running for re-election. He's already our oldest president. He'd be 86 at the end of a second term. So what do the results of his physical tell us? Back with me, we have LZ Granderson, Kristen Solstice Anderson, and joining also, we have Derek Thompson, staff writer for The Atlantic, and Dr. Devi is back. Okay, Dr. Devi, he's um, apparently, according to his own doctor, President Biden remains a healthy, vigorous 80-year-old male who is fit to successfully execute the duties of the presidency. All right, well, all questions answered there, I guess. <laughs> Did you see anything concerning? Well, I think this has to go, uh, goes to the doctor-patient relationship, right? This is his personal physician. So we were talking about Bruce Willis. We were talking about John Fetterman. You know, in those situations, both people were concerned, perhaps, about their symptoms. So they're going to get treated and talking about, perhaps, their their problems to figure out what's going on. In this case, you know, we don't know what President Biden is concerned about and what he's talking to his physician about. So we're not seeing necessarily a battery of tests. It doesn't sound like a bunch of cognitive tests were performed. Usually you could have neuropsych testing performed if you're concerned about language. As people get older, there can be problems with memory, word recall, kind of remembering the correct name for things, and executive functioning. A lot of people will have trouble with their bank accounts, balancing their budgets, kind of paying their bills on time, driving. Sometimes we'll send people for driving simulation. So in this case, none of these things are really being done. Now, President Biden also is, uh, he has atrial fibrillation, which is the condition that predisposes to stroke. So a person can have developed dementia if they've had multiple strokes. So these are things that if a person was concerned, they might send a you know, the patient to neurology or psychiatry for further evaluation, but that hasn't necessarily happened. Well, he did have a neurological exam, which came back normal. Elsie, By um, primary care. By primary, by primary care, care physician, care. So that's not, not a neurologist. Not deep enough. Um, President Biden does have word-finding difficulties. He does. I mean, we, whenever, <laughs> any time you hear him in a speech, he yeah. does stumble. And I don't know if that's his stutter or if that's the prompter. But he, he does. And as you know, his critics seize on that. So just him getting a... Um, clean bill of health won't stop them from seizing on that. No, but I mean, that's been a hallmark of who he has been publicly for, for decades now. He's someone who has a reputation of kind of verbally or communication with his mouth, having some issues from time to time, whether he stumbles, says the wrong things, get ahead of the boss, et cetera, et cetera. I think he's also suffering from the fact that as Americans, we don't like to see older people. Like, we like to get older, but we have a problem culturally with seeing age. And I think he's also suffering a little bit from that. Just people seeing him visually reminding them of mortality. That makes them uncomfortable. What do you think, Kristen? Uh, look, I, I think that the idea of, you know, there, it's been proposed, well, should we give a cognitive test to folks that after a certain age when they're running for office? I don't necessarily know about that because the campaign trail is kind of the ultimate cognitive test Fitness in a way. Test. You've got to be out there meeting people, being vigorous, being vibrant, giving speeches, answering questions. That's frankly why Republicans gave Biden so much grief after the 2020 or during the 2020 election, alleging, oh, he's campaigning from his basement. Due to the pandemic, he didn't have to be as out there, as vigorous, as public as he may have been under other circumstances. But Hopefully we are not dealing with another pandemic in the 2024 election. And should President Biden choose to run again, he will be expected to answer tough questions, to be out on the trail, to meet and greet people, especially if he's running against a Republican who, well, it might be a rematch of Biden versus Trump, but it could be Biden versus a number of Republicans who are in their 40s and 50s and will very much want to draw that contrast. That's such a great point, Derek. I mean, that the... the, the campaign itself is a stress test and it does take stamina obviously to be in a campaign and to be president there's no question he has stamina let's take the ageism question right on i think it's absolutely ageist to say that any 80 year old has to take a cognitive test for any job but this is not any job this is the most important job in the world in so 2017 and, in 2017 and 2018 the atlantic the new york times Writers and, and people from CNN said that Donald Trump should take a cognitive test. They said that he was slipping. They said he wasn't finishing his sentences. And he did he take one. He did, t did t yeah, exactly. A man, woman, uh, television, <laughs> camera person. Um, <laughs> yes. I, 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 can re I, I have explicit memory of everything that he said so in his cognitive we. test. Yeah, yeah. Let me play that just for one second to remind everybody of the results that oh, no, he... Now people are going to see that, that I got it wrong. That he passed <laughs> with, he said, flying colors. First questions are very easy. The last questions are much more difficult, uh, like a memory question. It's uh, like you'll go person, woman, man, camera, TV. 
So they say, could you repeat that? So I said, yeah. So it's person, woman, man, camera, TV. Okay, that's very good. If you get it in order, you get extra points. So good. I don't get extra points the first time. And person, woman, man, camera, TV, I think I get the extra points now. Here's here's what I would say. I I, want to make what might seem like a weird connection at first. In the last week, when we shot all all those things out of the sky, the lack of information on the part of the federal government created a vacuum into which conspiracy theories flooded. And people started saying, oh, my God, are we being invaded by aliens? It's aliens, isn't it? It's UFOs. And now Biden comes out and he says, no, it's actually, it's balloons. We we shot down some balloons. When the government doesn't give enough information, people become conspiracy theorists. The president's 80 years old. The risk for dementia increases by a factor of six between 65 and 80. He will reduce the number of conspiracy theories about his mental acuity if he releases more information about his cognitive ability. But you're assuming they're going to believe the information. I mean, I don't think you necessarily need to just be filled with constant information in order to trust an entity or an enterprise or an organization or a form of government. But you certainly need to be able to, if you tell someone that, you have to have trust between the two parties that you're going to believe what is being said. You're suggesting that if he just simply says hey, here's all the information, now there's no more conspiracy theories. We've already seen that's not going to happen. That's not true. I would say rather than think of releasing a cognitive test as a kind of vaccine against conspiracy (laughs) theories that wipes them out, it's more like Advil or aspirin for conspiracy theories. It tempers them down. It's a marginal game. It's a 48-48 country. It's always about winning at the margins. And if he can prove to people who might have had doubts that he doesn't have the kind of disabilities that other people are suggesting, that is powerful information for people who would vote for him except for their fears about this one piece of information. I hear what you're I saying. I just, think, I just think that, you know, when, when you watch other networks, they edit it strategically to show his flubs, to show him stammering. They, they do that, and then they sort of you know, send, uh, wring their hands about how concerned they are. So I don't even know if just seeing test results would help people compared to the video. Well, that's why I think the State of the Union was so fascinating as like a Rorschach test for this, right? Uh, watching the State of the Union, I felt like the first 20 minutes or so, I thought, if I'm a Democratic voter, I'm a little nervous right now. I'm a little why? nervous. What, that was, he was what were you nervous about? It just, it, you know, his delivery wasn't great, a little bit, you know, stumbling over words and things. And then came the moment when he got into it with the Republicans. And suddenly, it was like a different Joe Biden. I mean, setting the policy debates and beefs aside, his demeanor was changed after that moment. And suddenly, all the post-speech reviews were, look how energetic he is, look how vibrant he is. Oh, of course he'll run for president again. Everybody kind of forgot that first 20 minutes a little bit. So you can see what you want to see. Voters will see what they want to see. But there is that slice of swing voters, to Derek's point, who are looking for reassurance, and they'll they'll look for it anywhere. Yeah, uh, test results only tell you so much, so you can't look at them and expect to get all this information, but it has to do with following the normal process, right? So if someone has word-finding difficulties, a normal person would be concerned about it and then go see the doctor and maybe have some testing done. So it's not that you have to trust the test results, because sometimes they don't give you an absolute answer, but you might still see the doctor and be like, okay, let me get some cognitive test done, let me get a CT scan done or an MRI, let me have some workup with the specialists, and then you see the results, and maybe it's a little bit, you know, some things suggest one thing, some things are a little bit. So you're saying he should do more than what he's done right now? Exactly. Just a a standard physical. Exactly. You should follow the normal guidelines for what a person would do. When you start doing things out of the norm, that's when people become concerned. Okay. Friends, thank you very much for all of those perspectives.